So H1B cap has been reached. What do we do now? In this video, we'll discover the options and alternatives to the H1B visa. Stay tuned. In this video, we'll talk about the H-1B visa cap being reached and what are the options that uh, applicants that couldn't get the H-1B visa have to be able to stay and work in the United States. So as you know, H-1B visas must be filed on or after April 1st uh, until the cap has, uh, is actually being reached. And uh, typically, the cap is exhausted within a few days. And so people that are not getting the H-1B visas are out of luck. They cannot work for that employer and they have to look for alternatives that they can do to be able to stay in the U.S. and start working. So what are some of the alternatives? So a lot of people who apply for the H-1B visa are currently here on an OPT F-1 visa practical training. And most people are getting the OPT for about a year after graduations and some STEM professions people in mathematics and science and, and so forth, are able to get their OPT extended for up to, a year, uh, up to two years. So if you have the OPT for two years and if you didn't get your H-1B, as you know, you can continue working on that OPT and try the H-1B the following year. If your OPT ran out and you don't have uh, the option to work, we want to explore our first visa option, which is the O-1 visa. An O-1 visa is a great category for people in, in the startup world, in technology, uh, people that are uh, typically hold an advanced degree, maybe at least a master's, um, have done any work in uh, either started their own startup or been involved in, in invention of some patents or have written some interesting articles that gain notoriety and they won some awards and things like that. And sometimes we're able to, we've done quite a few cases where we had um, young entrepreneurs that done amazing things in the past, they, they apply for the H-1B visa, but we, we, reali we realize that they are qualified also for the O-1 visa. So really for the O-1 visa you have to prove that you are a person of uh, extraordinary ability, that you've done something uh, quite extraordinary in your field, and you can meet certain requirements, either you've done some, you, you, you gained some awards, or you've, you've um, really established yourself um, above and beyond from your, your peers in the same field and, and typically we can put together a strong pa a package for an O-1 visa for people that are trying to get to work for uh, an employer that filed an H-1B visa for them but they couldn't get it and they do meet the O-1 requirements, we try to refile and, and, and we try to file an O-1 visa for them and, and instead. Another alternative for the H-1B visa is the TN. So if you are a Mexican national or a Canadian national, you can qualify for a TN visa. TN visa has a list of 67 professions and uh, among others lawyers, engineers, um, uh, doctors and, and, and quite a few others, uh, technical writers and, and so if you want to, from those two countries uh, you can qualify for a TN visa if you, can, if you couldn't get your, the H-1B visa at that time. Another option for, uh, for a work visa is an E3 visa. If you're a national of Australia and you try to get an H-1B visa and you couldn't, then you can have your employer petition for an E3 visa, which is an alternative for the H-1B visa. It also requires a degree. It requires uh, a labor condition application. And it has quite a few similar requirements to the H-1B visa, except that this visa is limited to um, um, Australians. Another option is if you are working for um, on, on the OPT and, and you didn't get the H-1B visa, you can start your own small business uh, as a consultant or as a, as a service provider um, using the E-2 visa. If you invest a certain amount of money and start your own company, you could be qualified for an E-2 visa. And if you get your, in, in your, if you get your E visa as a, as, a consulting, um, as a consultant, then you can provide services to that same employer that tried to get you an H-1B visa. It's a great alternative to the, to the H-1B visa. And of course, it requires you to invest a certain amount of money. It requires you to start your own business. But if you're willing to do those things, an E visa could be an amazing alternative to the H-1B visa. At least since you didn't get it this time, you can always try it again the following year, but in the meantime, you can be here working uh, as an independent con uh, consultant you, uh, in, in your own company. Another alternative to the um, H-1B visa is the L visa. If you worked 
um, in, the, in a company abroad, and that same company has now petitioned for your H-1B visa, and you can prove that you've been either an executive or an essential employee, sometimes there's a way to get you an L visa to work in the U.S. instead of an H-1B visa. And L visa again requires you to be working in an executive or managerial capacity at least one year in the past three years for that same company that has an affiliation or a subsidiary in the United States. And finally, if you missed the H-1B visa and um, you are working for a university, so universities are typically a cop exempt, or if it's a nonprofit affiliated with a the university, there is also a way to uh, cap exempt those companies from, from the quota. So if you meet those requirements, the company can petition for that H-1B without being subject to the cap. These are just a few of the examples that we mentioned about H-1B alternatives um, to the cap. And hopefully you got the H-1B visa, but if you didn't, keep trying. And we hope that one day the lottery will be eliminated and there'll be enough visas for everybody to apply. But until this moment, you really have to try to time it, to fight it on time. And if you didn't get it, hopefully you um, got some benefit from learning about some of the alternatives to the H-1B visa. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to our channel. Every week we have an amazing video with tips and, and information about immigration uh, to the United States. And if you have any comments, post them below. And we hope to see you in our next video. This is, I'm Jacob Sapashnik, an immigration attorney based in San Diego, California.